Welcome back. My name is Eliunger Sargon, and I've been creating content on the subject of male circumcision for well over a decade now. What I wanted to do in this video was answer an unstated but ever-present question that I encounter when I engage with people on this subject. And that unstated question goes something like this. What's the big deal? It's just a little bit of extra skin that's removed at an age when the person can't even remember. Aren't there more important things to worry about? So without further ado, here are my top five reasons why you should care about infant male circumcision. Some 30% of the world's male population is circumcised, and if you live in a cutting culture, those numbers are much, much higher. So whether or not you are circumcised yourself, chances are that someone you know either is or is considering having it done to their child. And no matter what you think about the practice, even its proponents will admit that it's almost never medically necessary. So this medically unnecessary body modification affects hundreds of millions of people around the world, and we very rarely have serious substantive conversations about it. Weird, no? The data on this point is in, and it's unambiguous. Male infants experience excruciating pain, both during and after a circumcision. Now, for adults undergoing the procedure, proper anesthetic and post-operative analgesia is possible, but neither of these measures are available in the same way for an infant. What's more, while we can't fully predict the ways in which early traumatic experiences will play out over the course of any individual's life, we do know that lasting effects tend to crop up. One study, for example, found that infants who are circumcised shortly after birth demonstrated a more profound behavioral response to the pain of their six-month vaccinations than their intact brothers. The human foreskin is a marvel of genetic engineering. If we measure by concentration of nerve endings, it is by far the most sensitive part of the penis but it also maintains a mucous membrane that evolved to interface with other mucous membranes and make sexual intercourse a smoother experience for both parties. Circumcision destroys all this sexual function by amputating the nerve endings, rendering the penis immobile, and doing away with its mucous membrane. The studies that examine the effects of circumcision on sexual experience tend to be all over the map, but that circumcision permanently alters sexual function is just a matter of fact. In the United States, circumcision is seen by many as a legitimate parental choice, but the actual legitimacy of this choice is a matter of debate that raises some serious questions. There are many body modifications that a parent might contemplate for their child, with their benefit in mind, but the shape of the latitude that we as a society give to parents on these issues is far from obvious. Many Amish parents have their children's teeth pulled and replaced with dentures. They argue that this saves them from trips to the dentist. Other parents see height as a social advantage and give their children growth hormones. Still others might want to surgically alter their intersex children to conform them to one gender or the other in order to save them the confusion of growing up intersex. While the culture we are raised in may be more or less tolerant of this or that intervention or modification, the ethical questions posed by a permanent body modification like circumcision for the parents and the physicians serving them deserve far more attention than they get. If you're Muslim or Jewish, your faith tradition requires that you circumcise your sons. What this means is that circumcision becomes an important area of interest for those of us committed to sustaining a robust multicultural society. Where exactly do we draw the line when it comes to religious and cultural practices? How much ownership does one's community have over one's body? These are big questions that arise directly from the religious practice of circumcision. And if you look closely, you may start to see some fascinating inconsistencies around the lines that our culture chooses to draw for different kinds of religious and cultural practices. So that's it for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also click on that little bell icon to be notified when a new video goes live. If you'd like to dig into this topic a little more deeply, you can watch my first film, Cut Slicing Through the Myths of Circumcision. If reading is more your speed, you can head on over to my website and click on the Circumcision tab. And if you're more of an auditory learner, you can check out the Cut Podcast, 
which has dozens of hours of Q&As and interviews with some of the leading thinkers on the topic. Links to all this stuff will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for your attention. Until next time.